How are you? How's it going? This lighting is weird. I look a little bit like I'm like dead or something. Wait. Welcome to day three. Uh, I got my microphone to work. Hopefully, if the Lord be willing. Today, we have a fun day. Okay, we have a little fun day planned. I want to continue on reading No One's Home by DM Polly. Hopefully, I can finish this today. If not, no big deal. Whatever. Also, kind of want to read The Possession of Nanny... Of the Possession of Natalie Glasgow by Haley Piper. This would uh, fulfill the trance author prompt. I also kind of want to read What Moves the Dead by T. King Fisher. Even though I've already like fulfilled this prompt, but I still want to read it. So I might read that also. So many books I want to read. I was literally upstairs looking through my little suitcase of books and I found these. I found this while I was going through my little suitcase of books and realized that it could fulfill like favorite trope. It's like familial horror, I think, or maybe even like gothic. I don't know. But either way, I'm going to start here with no one's home i'm about to go live publicly for like little spooky smart bitch reading spreads i will link the live show whatever down below in case you want to watch it now that it's the future whatever i also think today says i'm not really doing anything because my life is literally so fucking boring i want to make banana bread i already have the pumpkin bread i, th I need to eat but i also have bananas that are like going bad they're like almost fully black. I'm gonna go live soon, so I will let you know when things happen. Okay. Okay, so I haven't really made it that far into No One's Home. I'm only, I've only read maybe like 15 pages. So far, someone has died and shit seems to be getting worse for people. I'm wondering if people from the past are haunting the people from future. And I wonder what the obsession is with the fucking attic. Like, especially in 2018 and especially with Hunter, the attic light is always fucking on with this kid. The chapter that I just got to, he sees that the attic light is on and even he is like, usually I would try to be brave or whatever, but I know that in this scenario, I'm not here to be brave. They know that something weird is going on. They're all trying to basically ignore it. Also, we just learned as well that one of the characters has a dead daughter. I'm wondering how that plays into it. This is just like a theory. This isn't a spoiler. I wonder if the house creates these things based on the people, similar to like Pennywise, but it's like the house. Or if it's actually like some kind of entity or like a ghost. Could be a ghost or it could just be that the house itself is cursed. Either way, I'm in for it. It's a bit confusing to go back and forth between all of these different characters and these different families. I'm starting to get the hang of it. It also doesn't help as well that I took a break from it for so long, so we'll see. Only about 15 minutes left of the reading sprint, so I'm gonna keep reading.
I just put in banana bread, as you probably saw. I'm currently still sprinting with Katie Colson. My plan is to, I don't know, I don't know what my plan is to be honest, I don't know. So I'm on chapter 29 or about page 168 in No One's Home. And I think I'm gonna stop here today and move on to a novella. I just don't know which one I wanna read. By the way, if you can hear the dishwasher, I apologize. Again, my my mic is being um, like literally a piece of shit, so I apologize. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to read The Possession of Natalie Glasgow and then also start What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. Cause this is like an hour and a half long audiobook wise. And then this is about five hours in terms of an audiobook. I feel like this vlog is like very not great. <laughs> The reading has not been the most fulfilling. As for this though, I really like it. I like how creepy it is, but it's very easy for me, and this is just me personally, it's very easy for me to sort of detach from it. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know like when you're listening to an audiobook and then you realize that you haven't been listening to the audiobook, but it's still been playing, and you have to like go back? That has happened to me multiple, multiple, multiple times. Um, so I think from now on I have to read this and only read this and not do anything else because I can't multitask while I'm listening to it. So I think I'm going to finish it tomorrow and just like literally lay down on the couch and just relax. But for now, we're going to read these two. This one, this one says that it's about Margaret Willow. And she apparently has like never met anyone as dangerous. Specifically, um, she's never met an 11 year old as dangerous as Natalie Glasgow. Natalie spends her days comatose, but at night she prowls her mother home unnaturally strong. <laughs> this is terrifying. What the fuck? So apparently Natalie's mother notices all of this stuff and she's like, I don't like this. <laughs> We're not doing this. Uh, so she, she contacts Margaret because Margaret like specializes in supernatural shit. So she's like, Margaret's gonna help us. We're gonna be able to figure all this shit out and like everything's gonna be fine. Um, but Margaret is mystified and terrified by Natalie's condition. It seems so fucking creepy. She's dying and before she dies, she might kill. Has a demon clawed its way inside an 11 year old girl or does the source of this nightmare lie with Natalie's dead father? Okay, I'm so excited for this. We're gonna start with this. A creepy 11 year old girl doing creepy 11 year old girl shit. Like, I love that. I think, I think I'm gonna start listening to Natalie Glasgow now. I'll let you know when anything like crazy or cool happens. <laughs> okay. This is one. Okay, also I have to like mention this because it just because I just realized Gemma Amore, Miss Horror Writer her, herself, narrates the audiobook for the possession of Natalie Glasgow. Okay, you better work, bitch. <laughs> I'm only like literally five pages in. This Natalie bitch, <laughs> this Natalie girl is literally coming alive at night and eating raw meat out of the fridge. Natalie, an 11 year old, grasped another fistful of raw meat and shoved it between her teeth. No, no that's, that's demon shit. That's demon shit. So it's weird because I'm like literally hungry. So, <laughs> so hearing hearing about her eating or shoving things into her mouth, I'm like, it's gross, but I'm also like, my stomach kind of rumbles. <laughs> so far, really, really good. Also, Gemma Amore's fucking voice. She has like a fancy British accent and it's literally fucking stunning. It's literally gorgeous. Anyway, okay, I'll see you later. There's like 10 seconds left in the oven for the uh, banana bread and I'm halfway through Natalie Glasgow. This lighting is awful. So far in Natalie Glasgow, I really, really like it. Um, I don't know, I wouldn't say that I'm like obsessed with it, 
but I do really like it. I like the idea of a child being possessed. <laughs> but I do, I like the idea of a child sort of going through this transformation um, into something very unchildlike. The reactions that everyone has had to Natalie is kind of scary. Like Natalie will just like walk, okay? Like walk, like she'll just walk down a hall and the adults will literally piss their pants like in fear. Like Natalie inspires fear just from existing um, at night. The first time that Margaret meets Natalie, she's like, she's terrified out of her fucking head. She's terrified out of her mind. She knows that Natalie is like behind her and she reacts as though there's like a lion or something in her midst. So things like that are kind of helping to like build the atmosphere, helping to like build this tension between uh, the parents, the adults, and this like tiny kid who like is pretty violent it seems. There's also the mystery of like, is it a demon? Or is it like a ghost? Like what the fuck is happening? Even though at this point they have like, they've talked about what it is, I don't know if I'm convinced. I think there's more to it than what they're saying, but I won't know until I finish it. There's probably, there is literally like a half an hour left of the audiobook. So I'm gonna finish this and then I'll be back and we'll talk about how I feel about the whole thing. Also my banana bread should be done soon, so. <laughs> Okay, I'm literally sitting here. It's been like five minutes. I'm sitting here eating my pizza, leftover pizza from yesterday, and listening to the audiobook. And can you tell me what the fuck is going on? What the fuck is going on? Literally, I'm like, this is fun. This is cute. And then, and then what? What was, what did you say? What? 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 I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But I also haven't been listening to it for that long, so... I think I'm gonna keep listening. I'm just, I'm just a bit baffled at the moment, so. <laughs> what? Anyway, okay. <laughs> I just finished Natalie Glasgow and oh my God, Jesus Christ. I, if I thought this tiny little novella was gonna go anywhere, I did not think it was gonna go where it went. <laughs> Never in a million years would I have been like, yeah, that's, that's what's going on. You know, like, what the hell? Let me be honest. At first I was like, I don't know how I feel about this. But then by the end, I was sold. I was sold, I was sold. It's weird, but it's good. Jolene, 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 Jolene. I'm begging of you, please don't take my man. Okay. <clears throat> Let's talk about Natalie Glasgow, what I think of it, and then I'm gonna end the vlog uh, for the day. And then tomorrow we will finish reading No One's Home. We will, we'll fucking finish it. I swear to God, where to start? First of all, first of all, you can tell first of all that Hayley Piper's writing isn't as sort of polished in this, but however, it's still stunning. I still really, really love it. It's very simplistic, but it gets the point across and it, it's impactful. It's also, again, it's also a very, very, very short book. The audiobook was only an hour and 40 minutes. Like it's not long at all. Um, and I think if you sat down and read it physically, it would take like less than an hour to read. Because it's so short, there isn't a lot of like character development. Like, we don't really hear anything from Natalie's point of view, or we don't really even hear from Natalie. The only thing we really see of Natalie is her as a possessed child. We don't see her when she's like not being possessed. As for Margaret and Heather, Heather who is Natalie's mom, they're not really fully fleshed out or very big characters. I would say that this book is much more plot driven than it is character driven, but the fucking plot, dude. The plot, the fear, the fear, the fear of fucking Natalie Glasgow. Like this little tiny woman, woman, tiny girl, tiny child is like actually scary. And then when you learn what it is that's actually possessing her, it's like, okay, it's weird, 
but okay. And then when you learn why, honestly, I felt like really sad. <laughs> like when it like revealed like what like what kind of meaning there was behind everything i was like that's literally sad and honestly deserved like <laughs> i'm not saying that like natalie deserved it but certain characters deserved certain things to happen to them even if it was like an accident but i don't care i don't care and neither did the thing i don't want to say anything it's so hard to do these because i don't want to spoil anything i don't want to like give anything away but i will say that i really enjoyed it i think i'm going to give it 3.5 stars out of five maybe four stars should we do four maybe we'll do four um just because it's like a very fun quick little read it's spooky it's fun and then also if you get the audiobook Gemma amour and her narration Oh. oh my god literally stunning her voice was meant for narration it was meant for audiobooks it was meant for, to be listened to like you know how like posh british people speak that's how Gemma speaks and it's wonderful to listen to so 10 out of 10 with the, with the audiobook but yeah i really liked this i'm excited and i'm excited to read more from Haley piper because she's my bread she's my butter <laughs> i love her <laughs> anyway um i'm gonna leave it there i said uh, i was thinking about picking this up i don't think i'm going to not today at least maybe i will on day five anyway thank you so much for watching this video thank you so much for spending this time with me i'm sorry if this is like a weird video <laughs> because this, this day has been wild um i hope you have a wonderful day though i hope you stay stunning and gorgeous I will also actually like link, I'll link the banana bread recipe that I followed as well in case you're interested. Um, and yeah, don't forget to hit subscribe because we talk about spooky shit, we talk about creepy shit, we talk about Natalie Glasgow and shit. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.